very grateful for the Kujira Academy for even offering me this opportunity. I feel like this is a really great chance for me to kind of showcase myself so everybody knows a little bit more about Funky or Coach Kuji. But then more importantly, some of the things that I think we can do together to sort of build, you know, each of you could build your own sort of Web3 identity or Web3 brand because we know how important this can be. So uh, with that note, I guess we'll kick off today's lecture series. So thank you for being here and taking the time. Really appreciate it on behalf of everybody and including Kujira Academy. All right, so like I said, this is sort of just a, a, a lecture on building a Web3 brand. Before I get too deep into this, I really wanna give a little gratitude shout out to my friend, Alex Finn. Many of you may have known him as NFT God in the past. Um, just to give you a little tiny backstory, which I talk about my leveraging the ex-algo talk. Um, I met Alex on January 5th of 2023. So I've known him for a little over a year. And again, just being like part of my nature as a teacher, wanting to help others. And it's just kind of hardwired into me. I very quickly was elevated to a community leader position in his 1% 1 uh, better club. Uh, and so that's how I got to know Alex. And I started seeing he, he really started to go viral last summer because he's a computer programmer and he started diving into the X algorithm and kind of taking apart all the code. And so knowing that stuff will help you build a brand, but it's much more than that. It's not simply just knowing how to leverage the X algo. There's a lot that goes into it. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about that today. So uh, I already shed this, I, I shed some light on this before, but uh, I meet the coach, Coach Kuji. My real name is Ryan Hazinski. I'm fully doxxed. Everybody knows me. You can find me on LinkedIn and everywhere else. Um, but in the Kujira ecosystem, I, de I decided to create sort of this dedicated account, Coach Kuji, um, just to make, you know, it, this really brings me back to my teaching days. I really liked to have a lot of fun in the classroom. I like to show the joy of learning with my and share with that with my students. So uh, I first came into the crypto space in 2017, and I was just the typical FOMO person like everybody else, where, you know, Bitcoin's going up, I got a Coinbase app, I bought some Bitcoin, I bought some ETH, I just thought we were all going to get rich. And of course, I hodled that into the ground and made perhaps the worst mistake I ever made, which was not paying attention in the bear market, probably by like halfway into 2018. I just kind of stopped paying attention to it. And this is why I think it's also important that you guys, especially growing up in Kujira, you grew up in a bear market, which I think is powerful because you really kind of find the true believers and the people who want to stay behind. And so uh, then, of course, in, in all that time, I was for nearly 20 years, I was a high school teacher. I'm a bit of a general nerd. Uh, I started off in language arts and then I taught social studies. I taught mathematics. I worked as a new teacher mentor. I closed out my career teaching the theory of knowledge, which is the capstone course for the International Baccalaureate program. So really high level kids, uh, really enjoyed all of that. And now of course, I'm working as a director of protocol relations with Lucky Friday Labs, which is a small uh, sort of incubator company that is owned by a small VC fund that now is exclusively focused on Web3 named Silvermine Capital. Basically at the end of the day, um, I'm very good at getting to know people, meeting others. So I liaise between a lot of the blockchain teams that we run infrastructure for and everything else. So why Kujira? I, I gave you a longer version of this story. Again, I fully blame KP. I think he is the, the biggest reason I'm here. And I'm so glad that he had these plucky penguins. And I wanted to mint a bunch because they were getting so much hate. Like people were like, oh, they're made with AI. You know, it's like, I don't care. It still took a lot of creativity. It still took a lot of time. Like I've prompted AI. I know how difficult that can be to further refine those kinds of things and get images that you want out of them. So I was really impressed with KP. I started watching him constantly bull posts on X. So I followed him immediately. And it was just like, okay, I need to learn more about Kujira. And it was really the challenges that he did with the plucky penguins to kind of that got me to open my eyes to what's possible for the DeFi infrastructure that's being built out on Kujira network. And that's probably the thing that really opened my mind, if you will. Um, and then as I came in and started to meet more and more people, first I was interacting mostly with the plucky penguins. And then, as I said before, I listened to my first Kuji cast space and I cannot tell you how hard I laughed. I was a kid in the eighties. People said all sorts of things that would never be able to be said nowadays because of our stupid cancel culture and everything else. I love how irreverent Danny and Max can be when they're doing Kujicast. 
And so that was really like the the thing that really just every it was just like a snowball that was rolling downhill, and I just kept getting more momentum and learning more about Kajira. And then really at the end of the day, once I was fully like two, three months in here and I realized all the powerful things that could be done, I participated in the Aqua Libre sale. So I got my first taste of Pilot, which it had been a year earlier. So I could have bought Wink when it first came out, but that didn't happen. Uh, but here we are today. So this is just a quick agenda overview. I'm just going to run through this very briefly because we're going to have slides on each of these things. Just, you know, if you I was a teacher for a long time, you always kind of want to share the lesson plan, what the objectives are, which I probably didn't do a good job. But at the end of the day, I want everybody to leave here with a better understanding of what it takes to actually build a Web3 identity and presence. So, of course, you know, we do a lot of our work here on X, right, because it's the place where a lot of agglomeration has happened over the years for many crypto users, but now we're starting to see other platforms become possible and try to help educate others. For instance, I also have a YouTube channel for Coach Coochie and I and uh, Coach Coochie, and I also have another uh, TikTok, which uh, for Coach Coochie as well, but that hasn't gone as well as, as the YouTube has. But um, just thinking about like what you want to talk about. So when you're building a Web3 brand, first and foremost is authenticity. And we're gonna get into some details with that. Knowing the algorithm is incredibly important, and this actually changes from platform to platform. So this is something that you kind of have to study up on. I'm sort of X is the one that I know the most about, but I do know a little bit about the others as well. Content, this is something that we'll get into a bit too, because you really want to find your niche. If there's something that you're very good at, that's probably the content you want to focus on. And then building community, this is something that's incredibly important because if you want to get known, if you will, to build that identity, you kind of have to surround yourself with like-minded people who are interested in the same sorts of things. And then of course, doing outreach. One of the most important pieces that's often slept on is reaching out to larger accounts that are much bigger than you. And we'll talk about that in detail. And then of course, just building momentum. I mean, I very quickly, after starting the Coach Kuji uh, Twitter account and everything else, I, I think right now I have a little over 550 followers. I'm just blown away that there's already so many followers on this dedicated account that's working for just stuff that's Kujira related content. So that's just an overview of what we're gonna talk about. And I'll probably spend a few minutes on each slide just to give you guys any, you know, and of course you can take notes, although this is being recorded, and then we'll leave some time for questions and answers at the end. All right, so authenticity. I wear my heart on my sleeve. This is just who I am. And I would highly encourage, you know, th there's something that my students used to say when I was in high school, and I don't even know if this is a thing anymore, but they used to tell me real recognize real. And, you know, when you're a very authentic, genuine person, the most effective thing you can do is really see someone, really listen to him or her, and really be responsive. Now that's more difficult when we're talking on a context like X, OK, but you really want to just be who you are. Like I have no qualms telling anybody that I am a giant nerd. I love learning. I'm a ceaselessly curious person. This is part of who I am. If I were to deny that, then then I'm not being authentic. In fact, I'm being quite inauthentic. And people will see right through that, especially young people like many of you, because you're used to seeing people be fake. And that's the last thing that you want to do. Now, this doesn't mean because one of the things that I had in my slide was like, I'm a big fan of being nice, like just be nice to everybody. The world is a tough place. Everybody's got tons of stress on their shoulders, is going through a lot. It's always best to approach people with kindness. That's just my take. Maybe being authentic for you is you just have tons of hot takes because there are some things like that are very effective at driving the algo because if you have a very sort of... Uh, black and white issue that you want to take a stand on one side or the other that even though people may be outraged at you for the way that you can conduct yourself if you're constantly being true to that that's still being authentic i'm mr nice guy you do you but as long as you stick to it and as long as that's who you really are deep down inside you will find that people will automatically be attracted to that energy integrity and engagement i think this is really really important because if you say you're going to do something, do it, you know, just be true to yourself, be true to your word, be true to others. This is incredibly important because it's only going to drive engagement. As soon as you say something to someone and you don't really follow up with it or your actions aren't consistent with what, you know, the, the things that you're constantly preaching, then your engagement is just going to fall off. 
And so you want to make sure that you're not only being authentic, but that those actions that you partake in every single day are going to align with your vision for your brand and everything else. And then that consistent authenticity, right? Like you just have to always be who you're going to be, whatever that looks like. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, of course, I, at the end of the day, as someone who feels like being nice is super important, don't go out of your way to necessarily like call people names. I mean, sometimes even the Coogee Cast boys were like, oh, say a slur in the comments. I, you know, I, I bristle a little bit because um, I also know that probably going to hurt the algo performance and stuff. But I also know that they're just kind of joking around and having fun. But that's them, right? Like no one is going to deny that when Danny and Max are on their little riffing in, in the Coogee Cast spaces, that they're not being their most authentic selves. So we're kind of, there we go. Um, so I won't spend too much time on this. There's a longer 15 minute talk that I did that breaks this down in greater detail on the Coach Kuji YouTube channel, um, which is called Leveraging the X Algo. So if you know the algorithm well, especially on X, because this is where so many people tend to congregate, this is always going to work in your benefit. It's going to help you get your message across when you're trying to educate others about Kujira Network. This is something that can be very, very valuable. Um, so just look, look for those interactions by responding and creating conversations. The number one thing you can do is post something that maybe ends with a question mark or tries to solicit feedback or opinions or anything else like that. Because what people don't realize, and I see this a lot of times too in the Kajira amplifier, people will go and they'll like and they'll repost. Well, guess what? That's the least effective thing you can do. The algorithm actually looks for responses. Because if you're replying, so for instance, if you have a, uh, a like or a repost, it's a 1x boost in the algo. If you respond to a post, that gives it a 13 and a half X. So that pushes it in the algo more. And then if the original author responds to the person who left the response, that's a next, that's a 75 X boost on that person's reply. And what this does is build that momentum in the algo because if it sees a conversation is starting to form around a particular post, then it thinks that that post is interesting and it's going to start showing it to others, even people you don't follow. I'm sure you guys have seen this on X, for instance, where it says like for you versus following and you'll get stuff on your feed like why I don't follow any of these people. Why is this showing up? That's not even an ad. It's because it's getting a lot of impressions and it's tangentially related to somebody else that you follow and it's going to start showing up in your timeline. Be selective in your networking. This is also incredibly important. Um, you know, one of the things that I, 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 I have not done and I'm not even good at, I'll be full disclosure when it comes to like, if you have a lopsided following versus follower ratio, that really hurts you. So like if you're following 2000 people, but you only have 300 followers, that really dings you in the algo pretty bad. And even if I have a good ratio and I interact with you, that also hurts me in turn. So I'm at the point, the account is so new when it comes to Coach Kuji. I don't really care. Algo be damned. I'm still going to respond because I'm building a community. I want people to realize that I'm here to help them and vice versa. And we're going to do this together. If you guys saw my Wednesday wisdom, for instance, in fact, today's message was about doing things together because everything is better together. Um, and then, of course, content variety is incredibly important. Don't just keep posting the same thing over and over and over. You want to have fresh content. This is why I try and do that Wednesday wisdom um, every single Wednesday and do a short one little minute, one minute video. But then I also post things like GIFs. I'll post pictures for memes, um, you know, doing a mix between long form posts and doing threads, for instance, that are informative. That's also really good too. So all these things will help drive the algo and, and this is gonna help you build that brand. Okay, content creation. I will, I'll be the first to admit, I suck at making videos, but I'm getting better. And the reason why I start there is because it's best you'll find that if there's something you're really into, like I wanna give some props, I don't know if he's watching, I don't know if you'll see it after the fact, Kuji Clips, okay? Kuji Clips, I think, does an excellent job at making these really highly informative short videos and funny ones too, right? Again, that, that mix of content.
But what you'll find is that like maybe your content is a different kind of thing. Maybe you're better at making music and you could do something for the background of, you know, or maybe you create NFTs. Like there could be any type, different types of content, but it's just be, again, when you think about that authenticity and putting that together with content creation, you really want to focus on your niche, focus on what you're really interested in. I have kind of forced myself to learn how to make better videos. It's still very much a work in progress, but you really want to do focus on that. Now, when it comes to content creation specifically, the number one thing I always tell people is add value. Whatever it may be, be additive, never extractive. Don't like start to create content and then ask like, oh, hey, I made a, you know, like if you saw Fusion, for instance, they were looking for somebody to explain the options. Don't like DM Fusion and say like, oh, hey, if you pay me, I'll make, you know, uh, a video to tell people how these bonds work or these new options work, or whatever. Always go into a DM or any conversation really just looking to add, how can I help? That should be the first question you should be asking. Because I guarantee you, if you talk to people like KP or any of these others who are early people in the ecosystem, this is exactly what they did. They just consistently added value. They get recognized for it. And then the next thing you know, they're working on the team. Um, so as I was saying previously, for those, the content creation, just whatever your unique skill set is, really lean into that. That's the thing that you want. If you're great at making videos, then just make videos. You know, just focus on one thing that you're very, very good at because that's probably going to drive the best results. And then, of course, you just want to focus on content that gets back to that first piece, adding value. Like, what's your content doing? Is it actually how is it helping people? And now don't think like it has to always be educational strictly because sometimes sometimes it could just be funny, right? We all need to laugh, for instance. Maybe you're very good at making funny videos that, you know, uh, get people to laugh or they're really meme heavy or what have you. So there's a lot of different ways that you can create content that can add value to whatever community you belong in. But of course, we want you to do as much as you can for Kajira Network. Okay, so I've already alluded to this several times throughout the, the talk so far, is building community. This is the one thing I feel like I've always really excelled at as a teacher, as a person, because I'm very much, I, I was the oldest in, in a, you know, out of three boys. So if any of you are the oldest child, you probably have a lot of similarities to me in the sense that you have all this responsibility that gets foisted on your shoulder when you're very young and you learn how to be a consensus bringer, right? Like when you have other brothers or family that are fighting, like a lot of times you end up having to kind of, okay, gang, let's get together. Let's figure out how we move forward from here. So I think this is something this is, you'll start to see how these pieces all connect because if you want to build a community, you're going to have to be responsive to the people. Do not ever think of the people who are on your timeline as followers. Think of them as your community. They're not like, don't ever think of them as an audience, like you're talking one way. Every time you have some kind of post, you should have in the back of your mind and be ready to respond to somebody. You know, and sometimes for me, that means coming back and circling back and seeing these responses, sometimes even a few hours just because I'm busy with work. But I do my best to always go back and respond to those people by actively engaging with your audience. That's going to make sure they see your content, number one but that you really show that you're caring. And that gets back to that authenticity piece too. Um, you can also, like when you start getting a community that's big enough, look at how we have these subgroups, for instance, that have formed, right? Like we have, we're, we're, most of us are in very many chats. We're in, you know, Plucky Penguins, we might be in the Wing Club. And so we're in all these different sort of little uh, sub communities, if you will. But if you get big enough with your own Web3 identity, then you might need your own your own network or your own um, platform to actually like bring more community together. Because what you'll find too with community, as you continue to build with them, they want to help, right? I mean, just earlier, Coochie was offering help. Like if if I ever needed something like that, that's that's the spirit. That's what you want to really try to. Um, you know, kind of foster within whatever community that you're building, because ultimately, just like I was saying in today's Wednesday Wisdom, it's better together. When you have people working on something, that that emergence, you know, like some of you guys are scientists, you know exactly what I'm talking about when I talk about emerging properties, right? Like the sum is greater than the, the piece, you know, the, the parts. And so I think that's really, really important. And you want to just continue to encourage 
and uh, others to participate. Because one of the things, like as you're building community and you have people who want to help, let them exercise that autonomy. You don't understand sometimes how powerful that is when you say to somebody else, hey, yes, I would love for you to make this presentation for me. Or could you do like, I mean, I'll be honest, all that you're seeing today of the visuals, that's all cash. I just gave him a short outline and he put together these wonderful visuals for me. So when you're having a community and you give that kind of autonomy to somebody else, it can feel very invigorating, very powerful for that person. So that's another great way to just further cement those relationships with important people. And then incorporate feedback. You have to have to listen to your community. You can't just go on doing what you want. You know, again, they can't ever be or think of followers as just sort of like a one way communication street that you're just speaking into the void. It's always a conversation when you're building with community, you're going to get feedback. Sometimes it's feedback you might not like. But if that person genuinely cares about you, they he or she is going to give you feedback. And so this is something that I think is incredibly important. Again, it gets back to that responsiveness on the earlier slide. You know, be receptive, even if you disagree. There's nothing wrong with disagreeing with feedback, but be open to hearing it, to truly listening to it, trying to incorporate it and seeing how that actually can be used in a way that will make you better and make the whole community better in the long run. So this is something that you want to take into consideration when building your community. Okay, now this is the part that I think a lot of people skip when it comes to building any kind of community, building a Web3 identity. D I don't know if you guys even know this, but when you DM someone on X, that actually also sends a signal to the algo that you're interested in seeing that person's feed more often. In fact, it's actually a pretty powerful thing. One of the best things I've ever found is that if you create a list, and I talk about this in the Leveraging the X Algo talk on the YouTube channel for Coach Kuji, but if you build a list of accounts that are much bigger than yours, there's a couple different things that that's great for. One, as they go ahead, if you if you have your notifications turned on for much larger accounts, if you're one of the first people to respond, you somehow inherit that reply, inherit sort of most of, and this is why replying is the most important thing you can do in the, in, the, in on X, is your your reply will probably have much more impressions than the size of your account because you're now being sort of sucked up into the algo with the larger account. But thinking about all those previous things, how can you add value? Do you have something intelligent to offer to this person? Maybe it's something funny, right? Again, that is still can be a value. So whatever you're going to respond to somebody, maybe start the conversation outside DMs. But then when you want to really just reach out to somebody, that's the time where you maybe write a thoughtful DM. And when you do this, Go into that conversation just being prepared to share value, compliment the person, right? Say, hey, I really love X, Y, or Z about your feed because of, you know, one, two, three. And you can give some information for what it is that you've actually really gotten out of, you know, following this person on X or whatever the case may be, whatever the platform may be. And so when you do that, you know, maybe even offer something, say like, hey, I make videos and I'd be happy to make a video that kind of summarizes this great thread you did. Do you mind if I make that video for you? Because when you're doing that and you're going to that same conversation, offering that value, people are going to be very receptive to that, right? Like it's just human psychology. We all, all love to hear, like to tell our own story. We all love when people are paying attention to us. It's just human nature. So when you go into that DM and with that strategic outreach and you're actually trying to solicit something, you know, you're you're right in Greenland, I've been soliciting now that I'm thinking about it, it's probably the wrong word, but you're offering something. You want to say, hey, you know, like I'll be honest, it took me probably months before I ever DM Dove. I just felt like he is the big boss man. He's probably super busy. He doesn't need to be bothered with me right now. Like I'm just gonna continue to make friends with all of the smaller people that I'm getting to know in Kujira. And then after a couple months, I finally sent him a DM. And at that point, I told him, A, how much I love Kujira Network. I love the community. I love the product and everything else that's being built on it. I love the team members that I've met. And then after I said all those things, and I said, I would love for you to come on our podcast and tell your story. So 
one of my um, you know roles as director of protocol relations is I'm a co-host for a podcast that's called the Central Lounge, and this is targeting institutional investors. So we typically have people who are from you know maybe a blockchain protocol, like in this case, Kujira Network. Or we have institutional players that maybe are IRAs or they're, you know, they work for custodians or, or, you know, these bigger players. And we put these on LinkedIn because we're trying to engage a Web2 audience with Web3 related content. Obviously, the institutions are here. BlackRock's buying up Bitcoin. We know this is the future. Anybody who's in Web3 knows this is happening. So when you're reaching out to those larger accounts, you know, these influencers and so on and so forth, offer that value again. And then what you'll find is sometimes these bigger accounts will end up following you back. So I have a few accounts, for instance, on my funky one, my main account that, that have 50,000 plus followers, a couple of cases over 200,000 followers, and I'm just a peon. Right. But it's because I consistently add value to that person's feed and I try to help however I can. And so this is something I think that gets overlooked a lot. And don't be nervous. Right. Like this is another thing, too. Sometimes people like see this as cold calling. You know, they feel like, oh, I, I can't talk to so and so because that account is so big. We're all human beings. We've all been there. Right. Like this is, I think, another secret weapon I have is that. At the end of the day, I don't care if you're the president of the United States or just like some average person working at the Burger King down the street. You're a human being. You were born. You were given the same exact gift as me. And so I want to honor that however I can. And if you take that mentality into every conversation with every other person that you meet, you'll find that the world will just open up for you. Okay. So the last slide is really sort of putting all this together. What you'll find is that if you are very authentic, if you're interested in building a Web3 brand, really leaning into sort of your, your niche area, the tools and skills that you have, this will automatically over time become a flywheel. This is another reason I'm super, super bullish on Kujira Network, because People in crypto get so amped up about price. Now, don't get me wrong. Price of tokens is exciting. We all love to see number go up. But what I loved about Kujira from the jump, once I really started to see and understand the architecture, was how completely sustainable it is, how it's built on real yield, how we're effectively allowing peer-to-peer -peer trading, lending, borrowing, you name it. All these things are happening because of this incredible architecture that has been built out by the Kujira network team. And so I fully believe that this is just a flywheel effect and it's just slowly starting off now, right? Kujira hasn't been around forever. It doesn't have the legacy, for instance, of like Ethereum, for instance. So, you know, don't get too concerned about those things because positive momentum yields momentum. People often tell me like, where do you get so much energy? And I tell them all the time, energy begets energy. Like if you're amped, if you're positive, if you're just always pushing forward, like I have uh, even at East Denver, for instance, it was like the end of the day. And I was like talking about Teddy Dow, our charity project. And there, and one lady's like, you have like a crazy amount of energy. And I'm like, well, I don't know. Like it's just, right. I, it's physics at the end of the day. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's that simple. So I think this is what you'll see when you're building your web through identity. I did not expect sort of the warm welcome that Coach Kuji has received up to this point. Um, and I'm thrilled for it. I'm thrilled to have 500 followers, right? Because I just know I can help get the message out there. But now my next step is to get to 1,000 and then to 5,000 and to 10,000. Because at the end of the day, this is another dirty secret. If your account doesn't have 10,000 followers, the algo largely doesn't care about you. But one of the things that's super, super impressive about Kujira as a community is that the, in some sense, because the community is so cohesive and does a great job of trying to amplify, we have these amplifier channels, and then push the post way up past like where, you know, I've seen Kuji Mitch, for instance, get sometimes tens of thousands of impressions, and he only has 2,000 followers on his account. It's because the power of the Kujira community coming together and building that, like, by, by replying, responding, sharing the message. And so there's two different flywheels. There's the flywheel of us as a community growing together that is going to continue to perpetuate the success of Kujira Network. But then there's also your individual flywheel effect by building your brand, by building that identity in Web3 and by being incredibly authentic, trying to offer value, doing those things. And you know, 
again, I am an older person. So I think one of the things I appreciate is patience. Whereas many younger people, it's like, you just want to go from zero to a hundred in a second. Right. And I get that. I understand that I drove a sports car for a long time. I want to go super fast, as fast as possible too. But I also have to kind of keep in the back of my mind that sometimes these things take time that sometimes building a, you know, a, truly a building, you, you do one brick at a time, right? It's not something that is going to just instantly appear. So the flywheel effect is just allowing that momentum to build with what you're, you're actually creating with your content, with your web through identity. And this is only going to continue to further drive you and help elevate you as an individual and your particular web through identity. But then more importantly, at least in this case for all of us is sort of elevating the identity of all of Kujira network and the incredible people that are in it, including all of you. So with that, I think we are um, up to our Q&A session. I tried to go through a little bit faster because I know some people had to leave. Um, but if you guys have any questions about anything, whether they're personal questions, if you want me to dive a little bit more deeply into any one of these particular areas, I'm happy to answer any of those questions right now. So, um, and I didn't think I already said at the beginning, but thank you again for being here. I really appreciate it and allowing, and, and thank you to the Kajira Academy team for allowing me to share um, I haven't been like in teacher mode and like, I'm just trying to look at the camera. Like I'm looking at you guys and uh, it's been a long time since I've had to do this. And I, I, I'm kind of feeling now really amped because I used to, you guys probably would have laughed hysterically. I, I had my students laughing a lot because I was qu quite, uh, quite the comedian in the classroom, a lot of antics. Yeah, well, um, just before we jump into the questions, uh, sorry, Coochie, give me one sec. I just wanted to extend my thanks to you for participating in this. Um, you know, I, I came across your account about a month ago. You're someone with great character, great integrity. Uh, you are more than willing to help us. Uh, I see the, the impact you're trying to make within Kujira as well. Uh, and yeah, very grateful to have you on board. And I, I hope it's something that we can, you know, continue to curate together. Um, as for the lecture itself, like I, I, I like what you've set out in a presentation because it's it's probably atypical of a of a crypto presentation. You know, focusing on those forgotten skills, the the, the human touch, the fact that building a building a brand and building a community starts with treating people, uh, you know, correctly and developing those personal relationships because you can create a, a relationship with someone, they're more likely to to help you out, and 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 having that is is very powerful. You know, leading with value. Um, one of the first things that was said to me when I started out writing articles with maybe five, 10 views, if I was lucky, uh, was that to lead with value. And uh, I think when you go to someone, even a bigger account, and you show them that you're willing and enthusiastic to work, uh, it goes a long way. Um, so yeah, just just to say thank you again for this. Um, and thanks for everything you're, you're doing with the community. Go ahead, like, Coochie. Yeah, uh, everything he said, I, I'm thankful too. Um, my question is about, obviously, there's a lot of education going on that seems to kind of stay within Web3. It sounds like you're kind of breaking out of that a little. I'm curious, um, has that been taking on well? Do you see people kind of engaging with your crypto content outside of the space? Um, you know, for the in the case of the podcast, yes, very much so. But even still, it tends to be people who are on the periphery and looking in, like they're already starting to pay attention to um, Web3, I just recently went home, for instance, to see my family up in New England for the weekend because I had to attend the funeral. And um, I got more questions. Like every time I'm around family, I'm now starting to see, uh, you know, or, or, or get more questions from people about like what blockchain is and so on and so forth. So I think we're starting to get to this new point. We're almost, you know, th midway through the 2020s, if you will. I think by 2030, a lot of people, if not most people, are going to understand, like, or at least haven't, you know, know what blockchain is or have heard the term. Um, but I haven't had too many, like, Web2 people who have no connection to crypto respond to any kind of content I ever put up there. With the exception of our charity project, because I think that does a very good job. And, like, everybody understands charity. They just know, oh, okay, you can donate some of your crypto to this thing. And then, because at the end of the last year, for instance, I gave out teddy bears to children in need who might not have anything for Christmas because um, it's a teddy that gets minted every day in this Teddy Dow project that we have, our company, and it's 100% for charity. So like those kinds of things, I think, resonate with others because 
unfortunately, we still live in a world where there's so many negative headlines about crypto and, you know, scammers and everything else. And this is why I also really believe in Kujira. And I've, I've said this in some of my little minute long videos, be your own bank, right? Like, I think one of the things that's most attractive about, um, you know, the DeFi space in particular and financial sovereignty together is that you really can, if you get to know something like Kujira Network, um, magnify your assets, your portfolio. You can put them to work. This is like my first thread on on Ghost. Um, so I, I like the thread on Ghost is a good example. I sent that to my my two brothers, right? Like they're not really involved in crypto. My middle brother, he's quite wealthy. You know, he just like rage bought a few Bitcoin and a bunch of ETH like during the bear market because I was on him all the time. Um, but I sent him the thing about Kujira and I've tried to tell them, he's like, Oh, that's really cool, but I don't have time for this and I wouldn't even know where to start. So like that's usually what ends up happening is even if I give somebody who's like so it's you could think of it almost like there's the core of like the web three people who are all working or doing stuff in this industry. And then maybe right outside that you have the periphery people who are a little bit, you know, they're they're curious, if you will. Um, and then of course on the outside of that periphery, though, there are people who are just completely clueless. Like and this is kind of a funny anecdote or an aside. I was stuck in the airport for seven hours waiting to fly back on Sunday. And I was in a lounge and there was these older people, older than me, probably like late 60s or something like that. And I heard them talking and they like, oh, my son wants me to buy that Bitcoin, but I'm not going to I'm not going to touch that at all. And so I literally like in that moment took out my MacBook and I literally opened Kujira and I got out my ledger. And I just started doing stuff like right on the bar because I just wanted her to see like and they and they they did see me. And I was hoping that it was going to be enough to like spark a conversation like, what are you doing over there? Um, you know, but it didn't. So I think like what we're going to see, though, is um, over time, more and more people are going to start asking those questions. And I think that's where our content if we were making it in such a way like you'll notice if you guys watch those wednesday wisdom videos for instance you'll notice i alternate i'll do something that's very specific to kujira like loving ghosts and lending out my stables right like i lend out my stables and i love ghosts well then this week it was that better together message so like i kind of alternate between sort of a very human message and then i alternate back to the kujira kind of like financial stuff or maybe just financial stuff in in, in general like i talked about selling my car and driving a beater or, you know, my budget buckets, for instance, for like how we run our household, because I, I got in a really bad debt when I was young. So I think leaning on your experience and telling those stories, right? Like one of my favorite professors used to say that we are not only narrative tellers, we're narrative dwellers. So like we live in the stories, we, we, we create these stories for ourselves, for our world, and then we live inside them. And I think that what's powerful is as Web3 continues to make an imprint on the world, your content will reach those people. I think it's just a matter of time. And that's probably also the other hardest thing about the algorithm is that a lot of times the only people who are seeing crypto related content are other crypto users, whether it's, you know, from Kujira Network or ecosystems beyond. I think that's the tricky part is, is and that's why we've intentionally been posting stuff on LinkedIn. Now, now that you say this, though, could you like, honestly, I haven't done anything with Coach Fuji on LinkedIn. So as an experiment to you, my friend, I am actually going to create like a, a, a web page on LinkedIn for Coach Kuji and then start posting some of the stuff on there just to see how people respond on LinkedIn, because that's truly Web2. I mean, that is as Web2 as it can get. Um, but we are starting to see more and more Web3 people doing content on LinkedIn. So um, I will have to get back to you on that, you know, just long term and, and what kind of impact that may be able to make. Yeah. Very cool. Thanks for the insights. Yeah. Um, just to follow up on, on what you've said there, because it sort of resonated with me. Um, it talks about, you know, education being uh, sort of the key to web free adoption and mass adoption. But the, and when, you know, when people do come around to education, educational content will be there how do you think the best way to target them is because it is quite difficult you know these are these are non-native users who don't have like a, a general grasp of blockchain and there's some terms that we take for take for granted which are actually quite difficult to decipher if you're not if you're new to it so how do you think the best way of approaching that is i think you know 
at the end of the day, just going back to like what I was saying in the very beginning of the episode or the talk, I should say not episode, but just like just going out of your way to help thing to help somebody like this is another superpower I've discovered um, being a former teacher. And I think this is why they love me at my job. I can go in and learn about a new blockchain protocol, like even Cosmos Joe said something to me. He's like, I don't think anybody's better than funky than like going into a new ecosystem and like learning everything about it in a couple months and getting to know everybody. Um, because what I found is that I'm such a voracious learner and I love consuming information, but I'm also very good at getting something, the understanding down conceptually, and then giving somebody a TLDR or giving somebody the ELI five, which right there are two things that are initialisms that if I said that to any typical boomer, like my aunts and uncles, they'd be like, what's TLDR? What's ELI five? And so those kinds of things, I think one is get away from sort of that language to your point, kid, like, because if you're using the terms that are unfamiliar to somebody, like always go into a conversation, willing to meet that person wherever he or she is, because you can kind of get a feel for someone, like if they have zero blockchain exposure and knowledge, like if you're explaining them like what a block is, you know, or distributed ledger, that's your way down that you have no exposure versus somebody who like, I know a little bit about crypto, but I don't know too much. So I think part of it is just like being good at assessing. And I think this is just being a teacher, like talking to students, finding out like, where is this particular student in this moment? And then you tailor sort of your instruction or your, your general help or what have you to like wherever that person is. Now, big picture long-term, I think what's gonna happen is that the technology itself is going to make it easier for us to uh, bring new people in. What we're going to continue to see is more and more account abstraction. Like when I was at ETH Denver, there was a lot of these things called um, ZK sign-ins. So where you don't have a private key or anything like that, but instead you're using like your typical Google sign-in or what have you, but it's done through some kind of ZK process to prove you through like privacy. We're also starting to see the digital identity thing happen. So I think as a lot of these products come to market and it makes the experience seamless, like ultimately what we want people to do is just go like, like they're going on the internet, like web two right now. We need to make blockchain and web three as easy as that, like just going to Google and typing something in. And I think we're eventually going to get there. But this is to your point, why we need this kind of education now, why we need to kind of meet people where they are and be responsive to those needs, whatever they look like in that given moment for those particular people. It's hard to really tell you what the future is going to look like, but I think it's some mix of those aspects are going to make it easier on educators like all of us who want to extol the virtues of Kujira Network to all these other people in the world because, you know, anybody who's on this or watching this really believes in what's being built here. And I think that in and of itself, that, and that here's another thing that just popped in my head, that in and of itself is super contagious. When you are passionate about something, a topic, a project or whatever, it's very evident. People can tell, right? I, th I think, I don't think anybody would ever question how much I love Kujira at this point after watching me just, you know, talk for however long I've been going now. But like, it's, it's just a matter of like, you have to have a sort of a discerning eye. Maybe it's partly because I'm older and I've been a teacher for a long time, but I would say number one, just recognizing what that person needs in that given moment and then meeting that person, you know, where he or she is in their learning journey and trying to help get that person, you know, and, and just sometimes it's as simple as like, my wife is a good example. Sometimes it's as simple as just sitting with the person and letting him or her try. Like my wife went from no crypto experience to Christmas break, I'm gonna airdrop farm to, oh my gosh, now I'm just like an airdrop farmer DJ, like doing everything and telling people, oh, like, oh, are you running grass? She got on to me like for months, like, why aren't you running grass on your iMac? Like you're at work all day, you know? And so like, she's just, it, even Kujira, she's like, tell me more about Kujira. So I sent her some Kuji and she's like, what can I do with it? I said, well, there's a couple different things you can stake. And she's like, well, how do I do that? And I said, well, let's, and, and like when she got to like the third question, I said, let's try it because I'm sure all of you guys will attest to the fact that when you do something, it's way better than like writing down a bunch of notes, you know, like there is something about experiential learning that just sticks 
in our head that's way more powerful than like anybody who's just gonna watch this talk and not try out any of these things, not go on Ghost and say like, oh wait, I have like a hundred dollars in USK and I can lend this out and oh my gosh, I can earn like forty percent. I mean, it's been just super high lately. So, you know, getting people to try things to dabble, I think, is the easiest way to hook them. Um, and you want to be there to like help them in the process because you also want to smooth out whatever kind of friction they're going to experience. Maybe that might be them opening the first wallet or getting funds. Like Kujir is a little bit trickier because you don't even have, a, you know, I mean, I guess there is Maxi, but you don't have a whole lot of sexes where it would make it easier for many normies. It's just like, oh, well, uh, boy, USD on, USDC on Coinbase and you can send it to Noble and Noble, you IBC it over to Kujira. It's like, you're going to lose a lot of people that way. So I think sometimes, you know, showing, demonstrating people so they can see it and then having that person try to do something is also really powerful. But at the end of the day, in this long-winded answer, I think it's just those three key things, understanding where that person is, meeting that person where he or she is, and then also letting him or her experience it first person, because that's going to hopefully get that learning ball rolling and just building that momentum, letting that flywheel kind of rip. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, experience is the best teacher, right? And I guess in intelligence, intelligence is the acquisition application of knowledge. So I can tell you something, but if you don't do it yourself, it's going to be a lot harder to take up. Um, and yeah, I mean, just on that, if if we can improve the, the accessibility to resources and normies can navigate it better, then and, and we democratize education, there's going to be benefits for the whole ecosystem. And I, I think people at large. Um, so yeah, education is definitely an important factor and uh, agree with a lot of the points you said there. We have uh, so do we have any other questions? Sorry, I interrupted there. No, no, I was just going to say, and look, we already have two incredible resources. We have Kajira Academy, we have Wink Hub. I mean, and like, I'm sure like you're just going to get more people attracted to these programs and wanting to, again, add value, build their own identity, get out there and, and, and kind of sort of preach the gospel of Kajira. Yeah, I mean, something to, to add on the Kujira Academy front. I know you said that Kujira Academy uh, is, you know, one of the, the big people trying to push this. We have released our uh, Discord publicly for anyone that has not, uh, just for a bit of self-promotion here, we have uh, released our Discord publicly. Um, we've actually integrated a bot within it uh, and we're building out that functionality right now, but that should aim to sort of provide students with a prescriptive guide through the onboarding process on ramping funds. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then sort of delegating them to different channels for our online lectures. Um, so yeah, we're we're definitely, we have been doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes uh, and I think now it's time to bring it to the forefront. Um, and I, I have no doubt that you will be featuring in a lot of our uh, online lectures. We'd love to have you back again. I would, I'd be honored. I mean, whatever I can do to help drive us all forward together as a community, you guys know you can count on me for sure. We're better together. Better to, that's right, baby. <laughs> I'm listening to the Wednesday Wisdom. <laughs> better together. Two words. Better together. <laughs>